Beastly Tales, Part 2. Yeti. Even the police felt afraid when they saw the footprints of the beast that attacked La Capa In 1974, teenager La lived in a Nepalese village high in the Himalayan mountains. Each day she climbed part way up Mount Everest to graze a herd of yaks, a type of cattle. India, the Himalayan mountains. Many Nepalese people live on the slopes of the Himalayas. The highest in the world at 20,000, 29,000, 28 feet, 8,848 meters. Mount Everest is the world's highest mountain. It takes weeks to climb to the top. Lakpa saw a few people on the steep mountain paths, only Buddhist monks who chose to build their monasteries far from towns and cities live this high up. Lakpa had heard tales of the Yeti, an ape-like beast said to live in the Himalayas, but the mountains stretch for thousands of miles. She never expected to see one herself. Like these people, Lakpa's family were Sherpas, people who first came from Eastern Tibet to Nepal around 400 years ago. Valuable creatures. People, lived, people living among the Himalayas rely on yaks for many things. These hardy beasts provide meat, dairy products, clothing, and fuel. This is a yak, not this. One day as Lakpa grazed, grazed the herd, she noticed that the yak seemed restless. She thought that a bear or a snow leopard might be nearby. Lakpa led the yaks to a clear snow-fed stream. She drank herself, then watched as the yaks fed on the tough mountain grasses. Suddenly, Lakpa heard a strange deep grunt. She whirled around as a huge two-legged creature came rushing toward her. It was a yeti! Terrified, she broke into a run, but it was too late. <gasps> what could have happened to her? Did she fight for her life? Or simply was this creature scared? The yeti grabbed Lakpa in its long, hairy arms. She screamed and kicked, but the yeti was too strong. Then, without warning, the beast dropped her into the icy stream and turned on her yaks. With powerful blows, it quickly killed three of the enormous beasts. Lakpa crawled out of the stream and ran home as fast as she could. When the, pe when the police investigated the scene, they found the Yeti's large footprints, but not the Yeti. Lakpa's story is similar to many other tales of the Yeti reported by people living in the Himalayas. Mountaineers drawn by the ch challenge of exploring the world's highest mountain range have also told chilling tales of this ape-like beast. In 1951, mountaineer Eric Shipton and his party were exploring an unknown part of the Himalayas when they came across a line of strange footprints in the snow. Eric Shipton. Michael Ward, one of, the, one of Eric Shipton's climbing companions, compares his own footprints on the right with those of the creature. It's an X. And the creature's foot. Eric Shipton places 13 inch, 33 centimeter ice axe in this photograph to show the size of the footprint. The footprints looked similar to human footprints, but they were twice as wide. They had sunk much deeper into the snow than the climber's footprints, so they must have been made by an incredible heavy creature. Incredibly heavy creature. Most amazing of all, the clear toe prints show that the creature was walking barefoot in the freezing snow. That must be a pretty strong creature, beast of nature. In 1970, another mountaineer had an even closer encounter with the Yeti. Don Willens was climbing in the Himalayas when a Sherpa guide called out, Yeti coming! Don Willens. The Yeti seems skilled at surviving on its own in a frozen environment. Photograph shows a bottle. A beast called Yeti, the name Yeti, comes from the Sherpa words Yete, which means that thing. The, ab the abominable snowman is another name for the Yeti. Don looked up, but only caught a quick look at the black ape-like figure before it disappeared behind a ridge. The next day, Don found the creature's footprints in the snow. They were about the same size as his boot prints. The Sherpa guide told him that the prints were made by a baby Yeti, a drawing of a Yeti based on eyewitness descriptions. This is what people think they saw. 
a Yeti illustration from a French magazine. Mm, they're all a little different on the face. Look at the, look at the face here and the face here. A little different, but who knows? Maybe those two, maybe these guys saw something different than the French did. Later that night, Don saw the creature again. He was looking out of his tent into the bright moonlight when it came lopping along. It headed for a clump of trees and began pulling the branches. Don grabbed his binoculars, but the creature suddenly noticed him and ran across the mountain and out of sight. The number of Yeti sightings caught the interest of some scientists. They studied photos and plaster casts of Yeti footprints, then compared them with other animal footprints. They decided that the Yeti footprints could not have been made by a bear, an ape, an antelope, or any other known animal. Aside from footprints, little, of it, little evidence from the Yeti has been found. There was excitement when a Nepalese monk gave a Yeti scalp to Sir Edmund Hillary, one of the first men to climb Mount Everest. The Yeti scalp given to Sir Edmund Hillary. Hmm. Or maybe it was just a cow scalp. We never really know. Edmund Hillary handed the scalp over to scientists. It turned out to be a fake made of goat antelope hair. Ah, just another fake. A fraud. But Yeti footprints are still being found. In 1992, Julian Freeman Atwood found footprints on a, on a glacier that no one had climbed for 30 years. Monster mania. Fascination with the Yeti has inspired many stories. Some are serious news articles. Others are just good fun. Will the mystery of the Yeti ever be solved? What sort of creature is it? Where does it sleep? How does it find enough food on the snow-covered mountains? Maybe you'll be the one who discovers the answers. Yeti footprints have been discovered on other mountains in Asia, as well as the Himalayas. These footprints found by Julian Freeman Atwood were on a glacier in Mongolia. Always in the snow. I guess when you think of Yeti, you think of an ape-like ape -like creature in the cold, snowy regions. Next will be Bigfoot. See where they find Bigfoot. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you want more information on the Yeti, if you want to be a Yeti enthusiast, then go look for Yeti. Go and do a search on Yeti online. Anywhere you want. Enjoy. <laughs>